Hey guys, today I am uh, doing an infusion cocktail. So, it starts like this, you know, I wanted to make a cocktail called the Marshmallow Rita. It was a bar rescue cocktail, I'll link to it here. Going to be releasing them the same day. But the problem was, here in the great old state of PA, where everything's run by the government, there wasn't any Smirnoff vodka, the fluffed marshmallow, that the recipe calls for. Well, to innovate, to make it work so I could do the recipe, I went out and I grabbed a bottle of Smirnoff, straight vodka, and uh, some marshmallows, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to infuse my own Smirnoff vodka with marshmallows and see how it turns out. So, basically what I'm doing here is, I'm going to take my marshmallows, and I'm going to put about one and a half cups worth. I'm using the mini marshmallows. You can use the big marshmallows, but if you do that, I'd recommend cutting them up, because you kind of want, you know, small pieces. So it just makes more sense to use the miniatures. There's about a cup and a half in there. You don't have to get real specific on the uh, measurements here when you're doing this. And, you know, I'm just going to pour that into my mason jar. And I'm going to take one cup worth of my Smirnoff vodka and I'm going to pour that in on top of the marshmallows. Now, you could decide to use a whole bottle if you want. Uh, go ahead and do that, but when I'm infusing things, I like to make small batches just in case the infusion doesn't work right, especially ones that I haven't done before, like this one. So, you know, you can give it a quick shake and try and mix that in as best you can. And as you can see, it's already kind of starting to dissolve in there. And I mean, some of the marshmallows, they're going to float on top. But if you keep shaking them over the course of the next few days, most of that should hopefully be incorporated into the liquor. It'll be infused in there. So uh, I'll give you some progress updates here in a few days. And it's going to be on the same video anyhow, but uh, I'll be taking pictures every day and then doing a follow-up when I go to actually strain it. So, it's a good start. And I would recommend giving this a shake, let's say, you know, maybe every six to eight hours and leave it in for about three days until you strain it off just to try and incorporate as much as possible. <clears throat> All right, so I'm back, and if you can see that, this is what it looks like after three days. There are some marshmallows floating in top, and if you look, there's a film that comes down the side, a white film from the marshmallows, and at this point, I think, honestly, you could have probably got away with doing it for one or two days of an effusion, and then filtering it, it doesn't look much different than uh, it uh, did after day one. So, in order to get the big marshmallows out, the big chunks, I'm just going to use a mesh strainer because, you know, the more we can get out of this, the better in terms of getting some of that junk out of there, the sediment from the marshmallows because that is the kind of stuff that makes your vodka go bad. And the more of that you can get out of there, the better. So, I'm just going to dump that in and hopefully not spill anymore. All right, so I'm left with this goop behind, and uh, those, I tried one of these earlier, these marshmallows, and uh, they are just like little puffed up balls of straight up vodka, that's what they taste like, so. If you're wondering what they taste like, because I know, you know, if you 
put infusions of like cherries or fruit, you know, eating the fruit sometimes is better than actually uh, the liquor that's left behind. And let me tell you, these are potent marshmallows. Okay, so after I strained all this into my measuring cup, I uh, went ahead and rinsed out the mason jar, rinsed out my strainer. So I'm left with this, you know, milky white substance. That's what's left behind. So I want to take that and strain it a little further by adding some cheesecloth into my mesh. Now, you could go ahead and skip this step if you feel like most of the gunk is out of there. Or if you just want to go straight to the coffee filter. Sometimes you can use this in place of the coffee filter too, but I actually like to use all three. I think you get a much better result overall. And if you use this before doing a coffee filter, it tends to make the coffee filter method quicker. So we're just going to pour that through the cheesecloth. And it's hopefully going to filter out some of that gunk. And even, you know, there's still a big residue in the bottom of my measuring cup. Obviously that's the stuff that made it through the mesh strainer, which of course it would, because it's not that big of a strainer. And, well, I haven't spilled all my liquor on the table yet. So once we did the uh, cheesecloth, the next final step would be to uh, wet, dampen a coffee filter, and then run it through the coffee filter. And that will do the best job at reducing the finest particles. Okay, so third and final step in the straining process is to strain it through a wet, a dampened coffee filter. You dampen it because if you leave it dry, it tends to soak up a lot of that alcohol. So just putting a little bit of water in there, you know, you don't drench it. You just drip a little bit of water in it to dampen it. That should uh, keep it from soaking up so much of our alcohol. Sometimes this process can take a while. I know when I did my uh, filtering process on the candy corn vodka, it took like two hours. But then again, when I did the candy corn vodka, I did not use cheesecloth and I didn't use the mesh strainer. I just went straight into the coffee filter. And that could be another reason why it took so long to strain. And uh, just judging, you know, on the first run, how much it filters out, I'll decide whether or not, you know, I want to use another coffee filter and do it again. Just, just strain it right back into the mason jar. Or, you know, that, that'll be decided after I see if there's any kind of film left. If it seems like it's still not quite as, uh, you know, strained out as I want it to be. And that's just a judgment call. But like I said, you know, the more you filter it and the more stuff you get out of it, the better. That is the stuff you don't want in your vodka. Uh, any, especially with fruits. That is definitely something you don't want in there. So this is step three. I'm just going to fast forward it because this is definitely going to take a lot longer than you're probably, you know, I'm sure you don't want to sit there and watch every single drip. So I'm going to skip ahead to the final product here. Okay, so I'm back now uh, with a finished product. This is my marshmallow infused vodka. So... I'm going to try some of this on the rocks here just to see how it tastes, but, uh, I mean, it's, it does have, you know, kind of a marshmallow smell to it. Uh, it's mainly, the alcohol's still potent. With this infusion, uh, it's going to be a higher proof than the Smirnoff fluffed marshmallow. The actual fluffed marshmallow is only like a 60 proof, so, you know... And I want to note, too, that I ended up filtering this about three times through a coffee filter. I found that if you let it sit long, that sediment, you know, it, it settles on the bottom. So you can just pour it lightly and leave that little bit of gunk at the bottom. You end up losing just a little bit of vodka out of it. But uh, it makes the filtering process a lot easier because especially my coffee filters didn't seem to want to filter all of that out. So, I'm going to give us a try. Yeah, 
I mean, there's a definitely a. It it tastes like marshmallows with a burn, basically is what it is. It it does have that marshmallow uh, flavor to it. I actually kind of like it. It's not bad. I don't think I would drink it straight, apart from this, of course. But uh, yeah, it is pretty good. So I mean, it's gonna work out. I think quite well in the cocktail recipe that I'm going to do, which is the Marshmallow Rita. And I'm going to link to that in a card up top. So, because I'm going to film that right after I get done filming this. So thanks for watching. Check this out. Do you have any uh, infusions you would like to see? I think that would be cool ideas to try out. Put down in the comments and I'll give them a shot. Thanks for watching. Actually, the recipe sounds terrible but it's actually pretty good. One ounce worth of your cinnamon whiskey. That is how you make a sex on fire.